Welcome back to my man cave. I'm not an expert and today I'm sure going to show you how to make a low primer sensor for a lead press. This is basically how it works. You can see these wires here. There's an infrared beam that shot, shot across a channel in the chute here. And the way I have the logic set up is if the beam makes it across, alarm goes on. If the beam is blocked, the alarm goes off. And we'll start out by just showing you right now, there's the sensors up here, the primers are down here. We have to load primers into it. This is another modification I made to my lead press. You can turn the primers on and off, a lot easier to get them out of there. You can find this video on YouTube. But now I'll plug in the alarm. And you can see, once the light is blocked by, by the primers, the alarm goes off. If you raise these up, to, for the components for making the low primer detector, one of the things I needed was a buzzer. These are really cheap on eBay, anywhere for two to two for three dollars free shipping or one for one dollar free shipping and it takes probably two weeks to get them they're usually chipped from China here is the other part that I bought off eBay it's an infrared slot sensor relay switch module and it was with shipping and handling from Canada sixteen dollars and twenty five cents and the only other thing that you needed for all of this was a power source. And again, I have this transformer that I have set to 4.5 volts here. Works everything well. This one I had laying around. You could probably find this on eBay somewhere too if you wanted to. This is how I wired up the board that I got bought off eBay. The two posts down here, the top one is the black, the bottom is the red. And that's run off this transformer that you can set the various ones at. I have set it at 4.5 volts. It has a built-in relay here that can turn a switch on or off. It's quite robust. It says it can handle up to 10 amps and 125 volts. But anyhow, on this one, we're just running this little tiny buzzer here. So the red line coming out of the buzzer goes to the red line on the power end. Then I have a black wire coming from the black power and it comes down over here, goes into the center one. Then the buzzer here, black wire coming from the buzzer goes to the bottom one. So this is set up that on this infrared relay where the light goes across it here, let's see if you can see that a little bit better, that right now it's set up that if the beam makes it across, the alarm comes on. If you were to take this wire here on the bottom and put it on the top of the relay, it would be the opposite, what most people are most more familiar with, the burglar alarm, that is the beam is broken, the alarm it goes off. But since we're doing part sensing here, we want the buzzer to go off when there's no part sensed in between the infrared. And I'll show you, give you a little bit better demonstration. I'll plug in the transformer here. And again, the light beam is broken there. It cannot go across. As soon as I pull that out, there's no part there. The alarm goes off. One thing I would strongly suggest to everybody when they buy this, there's four colored wires here. When you first get it, do what I did here. And write down the location of each one. The red goes on the top, the brown goes on the other top, yellow bottom right, orange bottom left. You'll have to make up your own charts because you'll need these for later. You have to always hook up the wires in the correct order. The um, slotted relay, it has infrared sensors inside of it is not wide enough to reach across the primer chute. 
So you have to carefully, again, remember all your color wires as you're taking them apart. There is nothing in this circuit board that you need. It's just making wire connections. So very carefully you have to break apart this U-channel without breaking the um, sensors inside and cut it apart. When it's all taken apart, this is what it should look like. Here are the two sensors that came out of one. And one emits an infrared beam and one receives the infrared beam and tells the little module there if the beam is broken or not. Also on these, please note that each one of these, let's see if I can get this in here, kind of hard to see, but on one side of these only, this one doesn't have it, this side it does, you can see a tiny little magnifying lens. That's what you need to broadcast across the primer chute. The same thing with this, there's a tiny little magnifying lens on this side. The two magnifying lenses have to point at each other. And I'll give you an example of what it looks like when I plug in the transformer here. And you can see they're making the light. And as I pull them apart, it breaks. So they can actually have, they actually have quite a long range here that they can sense over. And probably go almost an inch apart. So you've broken these apart, and I'll show you the next step now. Okay. So the first step in doing the next part is you have to find where there's an entire primer that shoots all the way across because you want to shoot this light, light, the infrared light through where it's going to catch a primer in the middle. If you accidentally drill the hole in the long spot, you could be getting in between two primers and every time it jiggles you might um, get a false alarm once in a while that bounces on and off. So I put a piece of tape here originally, marked a line where I exactly had the center of the primer. Then the next step obviously is removing all the primers from there so it doesn't cause an explosion when you go to drill it. Next I took a 1 16th inch drill and drilled all the way across. After you get done drilling, the next tedious part is you have to take this chute completely off the, the lead press, break it apart in two pieces, and you'll have a U-channel. You need to roll up a small piece of sandpaper and sand the inside of these U-channels on both sides to get any tiny plastic burrs out of there. If you don't do that, the primers are going to catch on that burr time and time again. It has to be super slick and smooth and sanded smooth on the inside of here. Now that you have the hole drilled across the channel, you've taken the channel out and sanded it smooth so the primers won't catch, you have to mount these. If you remember when I first started out, I said, I can barely see it. You can see there's a little bubble on each side of the sensor. There's one on this one. and one on that one. Each of those little tiny bubbles or magnifying glasses have to go into the that 1 16th hole and that positions them and you can feel them when they pop in and then I put a clip on them. I'm going to do that off camera because it's kind of hard to do that. After I had the both sensors located into their 1 16th holes I clapped them and clamped them in <coughs> excuse me clamped them in place with a black cup that I cut off a coat hanger. Um, these coat hangers had teeth on so I had to sand all the teeth off and fill it in with that little bit of hot melt glue so I could have two flat surfaces. And then after you're holding the sensors there just come in behind them and clip them in place. It takes a little bit of practice but you can do it. So it's all set and ready to go. I'm going to plug back in the transformers. The transformer lower the, the open the primer door and let the primers drop. And you can see now that the beam's broken, the alarm stops. When you run out of primers, or run low on primers I should say, the alarm goes off. The alarm itself is quite noisy and irritating, so a lot of times I put a little piece of black tape over the alarm to silence it down. 
Then to keep all these electronics safe, safe, I just put it into a plastic container here and put the lid on it. And that's all there is to it. I've run about 400, run over 400 rounds through here with this sensor. It worked perfectly, never a problem. So I hope you found this video help, helpful and thanks for watching.